What is up everyone and welcome back to Digimon Sword and Shield. Thank you all so much for the support on the series so far. You guys have absolutely blown me away with the likes and comments on episode 1. So today I'm very excited to announce the official release of the first demo. In case you're new here, Digimon Sword and Shield is a ROM hack slash mod pack that basically answers the question, what if Digimon games played like Pokemon? Every trainer, wild encounter, and boss battles up to the first gym have been changed to use Digimon on their teams with the types, moves, and abilities fitting for those digital monsters. This demo includes even more new Digimon than those we saw in the first episode thanks to Hollow's Digimods which you'll also find linked in the description. I've been trying to learn how to import the Digimon models myself and it is definitely not easy so I have to give most of the credit to Hollow and of course Ivo Newman who made all the models you saw in episode 1. You can find the links to all of their work down in the description along with the download link for the first demo of Digimon Sword and Shield which you can play on the Yuzu emulator or a modded Nintendo Switch running atmosphere. Now for those of you that prefer just watching me play or find it too difficult dragging and dropping folders correctly, worry not for I am going to be showing off everything that's new in this update and playing all the way up to our battle against the first Digimon Gym Leader. So hit that like button if you guys are excited and let the adventure continue. And we're back inside the digital world where last time we left off in the middle of taking on the Galar Mine. And I actually lost the save data from the first episode, so I had to replay back up to this point. So my team is a little bit different. As you can see, I've now got Terriermon, Agumon, Gabumon, and Gomamon, who I didn't really get to show off too much in the first episode. So let's actually switch him up first. And there's actually a couple of new Pokemon here in the Galar Mine. We can already see the first one there, this time tiny little guy running right at us. You might recognize this little guy as Goblimon, and he's actually going to be replacing Impidimp from Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is why he is so freaking tiny. And there's honestly something really cute about seeing him so small, but still, it's kind of weird because I highly doubt Goblimon is this small in the actual Digimon world. So maybe in the future, I'll figure out how to scale up the models, but for now, Let's toss a Pokeball its way just so we can show off its Pokedex entry and what type it is. And Goblimon will actually be the first Dark type Digimon in the game. In the future, I definitely want to implement his most known evolution, Ogremon, because it totally fits. The main thing would obviously be the scaling, but I guess I could always do like Goblimon over Morgrim instead, and then Ogremon over Grimmsnarl, the final evolution. I don't quite remember if we fought Worker Georgia before, but it looks like we did not because she's actually got a Solarmon, which is another Digimon you can find here in the Galar Mine. A new one with this update thanks to Hallow's mods, and one that has Levitate. I should have known that considering I've made the mod, <laughs> but I kind of forgot. I mean, it is floating in the air, so should have been pretty obvious. So originally this was meant to be Hagurumon, which is the gray variant, but it turns out this actually combines the designs of two different Digimon that look very similar, but Solarmon, as his name implies, harnesses the power of the sun. So I decided to make this combination of both into a fire and steel type. However, it seems I forgot to update the moves, at least on the one worker Georgia uses here, which is why it still has a spark from when I thought it was just Hagurumon. We break through confusion and hit the Aqua Jet. At one health, Gomamon somehow survives and is gonna be learning Flip Turn at level 18, which is basically a water type version of the move U-Turn. You're definitely not supposed to have Sky Attack, so I'm finally gonna get rid of that. Oh, there's a wild Solarmon now, or Hagurumon. It kinda has both of their faces if you noticed on the back which is why I decided to combine the two COD Digimon into one. And this next worker is going to have the final Digimon available here in the Galar Mine. It's going to be Drimojimon. And I believe it's replacing Ivysaur, which is why the cry might have sounded familiar. And right off the bat, it's going to go for the dig. I don't like that, buddy. I guess it does give us a chance, though, to buff up with our Hone Claws. And we're actually faster, so good thing we went for that. Dramojimon, you know, he's pretty thick, so a little bit on the slow side, but I'm sure we can tank a dig from it. And now with our Aqua Jet with the Hone Claws boost, 
is barely not gonna finish it, but does get to show off Dermojimon's ability. The tangling hair there is gonna lower our speed, I believe I saw there. Actually, since it dropped our speed, that means it's actually gonna be faster now with the dig. So good thing I went, oh my god, that did a lot of damage, critical hit. Don't like that, but I went for the flip turn. Even though I don't think this lady has any more Digimon in her roster, so it's just gonna end the battle. I definitely want to make these Wubats into Demi Devimon in the future and include that whole Devimon line. And bro, why are there still Nuzleafs in here? <laughs> That's the one thing I was not able to figure out because like I mentioned last time, Kumamon or Bearmon is actually over Nuzleaf, but only the male version of Nuzleaf. So I don't know why there are females popping up when I made it so that Nuzleaf is only male. But either way, this next guy here is actually going to have a Goblimon of his own which as we saw is a pure dark type. Unfortunately, I don't have any fighting moves on my goblin dude. So we're just gonna have to rely on the rock throw, which is actually a reference to one of Goblimon's signature moves. He apparently summons a rock out of nowhere, which is exactly what rock throw does. And that is pretty much it for the mine, which means it is time for our rematch against Bead. You think you're just so damn smooth, don't ya? I shouldn't talk smack, to be honest. He definitely kicked our butt last time, but we've got Goblimon now, so things are definitely going to go differently because Gabumon X here is actually a fire and ice type, which means Rock Throw is four times super effective, but we're still slower than it, and it's going to one-shot Goblimon. Oh, that is not a good start because this thing definitely still has Beast Boost, and that's going to raise its attack even higher. Hopefully, Double Kick can handle it. Oh, it's going for Fury Cutter. That's interesting that it did that much damage despite being not very effective. And the Double Kick, I mean, okay, it does a little bit more than half. So with two Double Kicks, we should be able to handle it. And I appreciate that, Bead, because I don't want to be losing again. <laughs> and as you'll see there, instead of the Sucker Punch, I gave it Snarl, which gets a critical hit and also is going to drop our special attack. But... It's all good because one more double kick should finish it. Bam. I know a lot of people like the fact that this battle was actually difficult because Pokemon games don't tend to really give much of a challenge. But to be honest, I'm kind of conflicted on how difficult I want to make this. Because that Gabumon X, if you're not prepared for it, can still definitely tear through your team. So let me know what you think of the difficulty in the comments. Should I bring back the Sucker Punch or was that a little bit too unfair? Now it's time to head out of the mine and on to Turfiel, where the first Digimon Gym awaits. But of course, first we've got Route 4 to take on, where we can find a couple of new Digimon. One of which I really want to catch because, oh actually, there it is. Hello little guy. This is actually the first place we can find. Harrismon, who is going to be a pure electric type. I did update the catch rates of a lot of these, like last episode, Gaumon was particularly challenging to catch, and Harrismon here actually breaks out. Across the board, I updated the catch rates because I realized that I hadn't touched them at all, so Digimon that were skin over starters, for example, were pretty tough to catch, and Harrismon here is apparently pretty tough too, even though it's over the skin of, oh wait, it's... Gibble. Yeah, Gibble is not the easiest Pokemon to catch, which I guess is making Harrismon here kind of difficult too. For some reason, it seems like I already had that registered in my Pokedex, even though I definitely never caught a Harrismon before. But uh, there's actually a couple of trainers around here, and I'm glad I didn't get spotted because half of my team is dead right now. So I'm gonna head over to the Pokemon Center, even though I'm pretty sure, yeah, we got a cutscene first. Oh my god. <laughs> Once again, I forgot that uh, I did this to Wooloo. Now before moving on from Route 4, I really want to get a Patamon and finally, it seems like we found one. Hello. I remember some comments mentioned why more Digimon don't learn the move Bubble. And that's because it's actually not in Sword and Shield, but I finally gave someone Bubble Beam. So I hope you're happy, because I'm not happy right now. Since I actually clicked rollout, that means that Harrismon is just going to keep using that automatically and I can't even throw my Pokeball. Unless the Bubble Beam actually finishes me. Okay, no. Well, I guess Patamon's just not meant to be, huh? 
This Poke Kid's got another new Digimon though. It's gonna be Betamon. Well, I think it might be named after Beta Fish, because I'm pretty sure it's a water type, but it also has a lot of electric moves, which is why I've actually made it into a water and electric type. Still kind of fits, since this kid is a fanboy of Pikachu. I figured he might like electric types in general, but that also means that it's weak to our bone rushing. So goodbye, little guy. I was not quite able to figure out how to make Diglett into a different Digimon. Otherwise, I would have put Dremojimon digging underground, but still no Patamon. So let's just go take on this Poke Kid. I'm not even sure what she's impersonating, but uh, Sunny here will have Goblimon. Oh my God, I can see why Sunny's got this Goblimon. It's got the Pyro Ball, which is another reference to one of Goblimon's attacks with cheese. Seems a little OP. All right, Terriermon, it's all on you, bro. Even though I'm pretty sure that uh, it's still gonna be faster. Oh wait, Terriermon's actually faster than it, thank goodness. We get the rapid spin and a speed race, but I don't know if we can survive another pyro ball. Terriermon, no! Okay, we're fine, actually. And we get burned. Okay, maybe we're not fine then. This Goblimon is insane. But I guess we're still faster than it, and with the rapid spin, speed raise, yeah, we can at least hit that and finish it. Just barely. Sunny was about to wreck my team. At this point, I don't even want to risk hitting it, so let's just go for our Pokeball. I think Patamon does have a pretty high catch rate, so thank goodness we finally got it. Now, Patamon here is going to be a normal and flying type and does evolve through the use of a shiny stone but maybe not into the evolution that you're thinking of. And now we have this little kid talking about something called Eevee. Never heard of it. Oh my gosh, Mia with the Sayakumon. If you're an expert on Pokemon Cries, you might notice that this is actually over the skin of Tapu Fini, the legendary from Alola. But that doesn't mean it's got legendary level of power. Sayakumon is just a rookie after all. And I've made it the most defensive Pokemon in this mod, so if you're a little bit more into defense than offense, then this is the Digimon for you. Now it is going to be a rock and water type. I thought about making it just pure water, but there was already a couple of other water Pokemon with Gomamon and Betamon, so I wanted to make it a little more diverse. And with that big shell it likes to hide it, I figured rock type kind of fit. Now there's one final trainer in this route, and to be honest, I completely forgot what kind of Digimon he's got, but he's a breeder, so I'm expecting some more babies? Oh, it's actually gonna be Gomamon. Bro, what the frick? I was talking smack about these babies, suddenly this dude's got head smash on his Koromon? <laughs> it's alright, Patamon, it's time for you to show your skills. He's already got Berry Wind and Wing Attack, but uh, since we're flying type, I think Wing Attack would probably be a better idea. He's gonna Noble Roar. I think that lowers our special attack? Oh, actually physical and special attack. That's not good, but I think we should still be able to finish it. Yes, very good. Smack it with those wings and Galmon goes down. Dang, that was very little experience. I was hoping one of my Digimon would evolve before this gym, but I guess not. There are actually a ton more new Digimon waiting in the wild area. However, I suggest setting your console date to the 1st of May because on that day, the weather is overcast throughout the whole wild area. And I was too lazy to change the encounters for every single different type of weather. So most Digimon only pop up when the weather is just this basic little sun. Except for the static overworld Digimon, which <laughs> we got Tyrannomon over here a little bit smaller than I expected it to be. Pretty sure this guy's supposed to be way bigger, and it's actually a very strong looking Tyrannomon, okay? If you decide to download and play the game for yourself, definitely recommend exploring more of the wild area as long as the date is set to May 1st so everything is overcast, then most of everything popping up should be Digimon, including some pretty powerful ones. Oh my goodness, that thing is freaking huge, dude! <laughs> I do not want to mess with Galgamon. Oh, okay, I guess he doesn't want to mess with me either. And it's time to take on the Turfield Gym, which is still going to be mainly centered around grass types, but there's really only one grass Digimon in the game so far, so I had to get a little creative with the teams of at least 
the trainers as Red steps into the gym and... I totally forgot that this is a thing. <laughs> we have to herd the Wooloos. Oh boy. <laughs> the fact that I made this the Minecraft sheep, like... I didn't expect the Wooloos to actually show up all that much in the mod. But it's honestly made every time they pop up such a nice a surprise. Gotta love that sound effect. Okay, now we got a little Yamper to worry about. Or not? We can just walk him straight in there. Hey, stay in formation! Yo! No strays today! Gotta have all 20 out of 20 in order to smack him as hard as you can. And here we've actually got our first gym trainer. Welcome, gym challenger. Sorry, but I'll have to send you packing. And there it is, the only grass Digimon in the game. Thankfully, Palmon has a lot of diversity in its move pool, and as you can see, I've got Patamon leading the charge because the wing attack is going to come in very handy against the gym leader. That's all I'm going to say. But as you'll notice, Palmon now has a little bit more poison added. Because in the comments, a lot of people pointed out the fact that Palmon's signature move is called Poison Ivy. So I decided to actually make it into a Grass and Poison type. Even though when it evolves, it's going to go into Grass and Fighting and then eventually into Grass and Fairy. But that doesn't take away from Palmon itself being Grass and Poison type. With the Effect Spore, it's actually going to also get the poison on us. But it's not actually going to go for any poison moves. Even though I'm pretty sure I gave it a poison move, I guess he's gonna go for Mega Drain? I don't really know how the AI for trainers works. There's like a couple of options for making them stronger, but at the end of the day, if they choose the wrong move, that's not really up to me. So we take it down, and off of it, almost everybody's gonna get a level up. More specifically, Agumon and Gabumon are gonna hit level 20, which means we're actually gonna have a double evolution at the end of this. Thank you very much, Samuel, for that nice, juicy experience. Now it's time for our first Rookie Digivolution, and of course, who would it be none other than Agumon, the most famous Digimon of them all. We finally got ourselves a Greymon, and upon evolving, he's going to be learning the Horn Attack. I mean, you see that big ol' horn, of course, that's the move that it would learn. But like I said, we're going to have a double evolution, and next up, it's going to be Gabumon. But you might notice something weird about this evolution. That is definitely not the champion form of Gabumon. That's uh, Mega or Ultimate. I always forget what comes after champion. But the point is, we're missing Garurumon in this mod. But you can bet that's like the first one that I'm going to request for the next update. Now because we don't have Garurumon, that means that where Garurumon here is actually going to be at a champion level in terms of its stats and going to be learning the Sucker Punch upon evolving, which I will definitely grab because you might have noticed it is actually going to be an Ice and Dark type. And honestly, where Garurumon was always one of my favorites during the Adventure series, so even though we don't have the original Garuru, I'm glad that this one made it in. Time to herd those sheeps! There's a little yamper coming down the middle, but I'm pretty sure if we just run them down the right, we'll be totally fine. Except, we actually have the next trainer, who I believe will be switching things up. Trainer Mark here's got the Biomon. Not really the most fitting for a Grass Gym, but like I said, if I made it just Grass Digimon, then basically every trainer would just have Palmon. And it's actually going to be going for the Fire Spin, which means that Patamon is going to be trapped. And also, we're still poisoned, so really everything's kind of stacked up against Patamon here. Now, there is still one more trainer to take on here, and it's going to be Leah, who's got the Tanamon. Like I said, not very many grass types, but this Tanamon, I think, has something special to it, so I hope Terriermon can handle it with a couple of double hits. Oh my gosh, why are you so tanky? You're supposed to be a baby! And oh jeez, there it is! The wood hammer coming out! Just barely doesn't finish us, holy moly! <laughs> You're probably wondering why it's got that move, but it is actually a reference to something Tanamon apparently does. In the last episode I had branch poke, but I felt like that description sounds more like wood hammer, so... Things are not gonna end well for Terriermon. Okay, we did it! Which means it is time to take on the gym leader! After our 
precious Wooloo destroy the final hurdle, that is. The gym mission has been cleared, which means it's time to step into the stadium. Oh, I forgot how cool gym battles in Pokemon Sword and Shield are. Like, this is definitely the game where you most feel the hype of taking on the gym challenge. And of course, here in Turfield, it's gonna be Milo. And he's gonna be kicking things off with a Palmon. But it looks like he's got a special Palmon. It's gonna be another shiny here. Okay, you're flexing a little bit. I see you. I don't know what red is flexing there with those wristbands, but the Dynamax Phenomenon. That's right. The first gym battle is the first place that we can trigger our Dynamaxing. Oh, I love how the Rotom flies around to the camera angle. I don't know why we need to look at chat over there, but uh, we're going to kick things off with an Incinerate as Palamon is going to start off with the Ingrain. Don't know if Incinerate's actually going to be enough to one-shot this thing, and now with Ingrain, that means it's going to actually heal up a little bit every turn. Now, we don't quite finish it, but we did do a lot of damage, so having Agumon, or I guess Greymon here against the first gym, definitely a big advantage. It's gonna go Mega Dream, so it's gonna heal up a little bit, but I don't think you really stand a chance. So I'm gonna flex a little bit with the Horn Attack, and that's still gonna finish it, but we get poisoned by the Effects Spore, so Palmon is actually gonna at least putting in a little bit of damage on Greymon here. Well, long-lasting damage with the poison, okay. We might as well keep Greymon in. There it is, the Togemon, who's over Ludicolo, which means he's gonna be doing his little dancey dance there. <laughs> Hallow's mod actually has Togemon over Machoke instead, which does make it more in line with the scale of the actual Togemon, but I just love the fact that it dances like that too much to replace it. But wait, because it's Dynamax time! We're going to be fighting our first Dynamax Digimon, which is definitely not a thing in the Digimon world. Like, they don't just turn giant the gimmicks over there a little bit more creative. But it at least does make Togemon a little bit more fit to its actual size. Oh my god, what is it doing? <laughs> oh, the way it freaking shakes, man. I can't get over it. Incinerate! is actually gonna not do as much as I was expecting. Oh god, the Max Knuckle. Holy moly! That did a lot more damage than I was expecting, and it's also gonna raise Togemon's attack, of course, so that's not good. I was gonna go for Patamon and hope that Wing Attack is enough, but now I'm not really sure. I think there's only one way to win this battle, and it's to Dynamax our own Digimon, of course. Although it's probably the one you are least expecting, because we're going to be Dynamaxing Patamon. Kill me! Oh my god. <laughs> it already looked ridiculous being on the ground breathing super hard. Now it's even more weird looking as Togemon's actually going to go for the Dark Dynamax move. Okay, that's... A lot of damage. Uh, I don't know why I was expecting to survive at least one hit from it. I totally just wasted my Dynamax. You know, if this was a fair two-on-two -two battle, we kind of just lost it. But it's not just two-on-two. -two. We still got plenty more Pokemon. Goblimon looks like he should actually be level 19 by now, but somehow isn't. I'm gonna go for the Rock Throw, even though I feel like it's just gonna absolutely destroy us with the Max Knuckle! Holy moly! That's not good at all, but uh, I suppose at least the Dynamax is now over? Right? It only lasts three turns? Or maybe not? It still seems to be Dynamaxed. Alright, enough playing around. Let's go for where, Garurumon? This guy should be able to handle it, right? Even though uh, it's actually half dark and ice, which are both weak to fighting types. So maybe not. I, I think we might actually just lose this gym battle straight up. <laughs> At least the Dynamax finally wears off. And now, the moment of truth. Will we be faster than Togemon? Because if we're not, then we're probably just going to lose. But we are. So Frost Breath with the crit is not going to finish it. Oh my god. That's not good. And uh, Togemon actually has Drain Punch, which means that where Garurumon's gonna get one shot, and it's gonna get probably its whole health back, because that's a whole Digimon it took out. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a lot of health it just got back. 
And uh, Gobamon here is water type, so he's not going to do much. Terriermon's just going to give it even more health back with the uh, Drain Punch. Oh, this is not good, dude. I don't really know how we're going to come out on top of this. There's no way I'm about to lose to Milo, though. So I'm going to go for the Revive on Wergarumon. Since we know that we're at least faster than Togemon, we'll let Greymon go down. And hopefully with another Frost Breath crit, we'll finish it. I really can't believe this Togemon has given us this much trouble, though. Like, jeez, man. I know Drain Punch might seem a little bit ridiculous, but it was really the Max Knuckles with the Dynamax that set it up for success. Otherwise, the Drain Punches wouldn't be doing nearly as much. Actually, where Garumon has Intimidate, which also helps a lot. But what really matters is that the Frost Breath finishes it, and yes, it took two revives, but we actually did it. Oh my god. Oh. These battles are way too close. Like, I had to use basically my whole team there against just two. Really just against one. Like, Palamon didn't do much. But that Togemon, gotta give him props. Uh, I don't know how I feel about Red doing that little dance right there. Um, Burgerumon also, maybe not so fitting for it. But we beat Milo. And I totally forgot, but we're actually gonna have some evolutions. Wait, oh my god, no! I accidentally hit the B button, bro. <laughs> Okay, I, I guess Gomamon's not evolving then, but Terriermon definitely will, so here we go! It is time for... what? Wait, huh? That's not who I was expecting. We got Dramojimon? Much like Tyro evolves into either Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee based on which stat is higher, I've actually done the same thing for Terriermon here, and it looks like mine actually had a higher defense, which is pretty rare but unintentionally showed off another cool thing about this Digimon mod, I guess. More importantly, we have defeated Milo, which means that is actually the end of version one of Digimon Sword and Shield. There may be a couple of little surprises waiting for you over on Route 5, but beyond that, I haven't actually modded any of the trainers or anything, so you can feel free to keep playing the game if you downloaded it for yourself, but don't expect the trainers to actually have Digimon or the wild Pokemon. I will say though, there are more evolutions to the currently existing ones, like Greymon might have another form. So there is still more to show off in this version, just not in terms of the story. Another one of those evolutions is actually Patamon, who evolves by Shiny Stone. Unfortunately, Shiny Stones aren't found until way later in the game, so I went ahead and gave myself one just so we can show off Another pretty unique evolution, I would say. Normally, you'd expect Patamon, of course, to become Angemon, but in Digimon Adventure 2, we had the introduction of Digi-X, and so Patamon will instead become Pegasusmon, the wings of courage. Pegasusmon, flying hope. Something like that. And this is actually going to be a fairy and flying type. So finally, Patamon is a fairy type. I know you might have been thinking like base Patamon to be fairy type, but in its evolution, it most definitely is. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed and would like to see a part three. Although I wouldn't expect any more new Digimon necessarily. I do want to show off more of the Digivolutions that we didn't really get to since this demo only goes up to the first gym but I could always change up some of the Pokemon League teams and maybe do a late game Digimon Battle Showcase. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next episode.